Welcome to a Tech Moment on Cannabis Tech. I'm your host, Christina Etter. In this podcast, we take just a few minutes to talk about some of the exciting science and technology that's happening in the cannabis and hemp industries all across the world. And unless you have been avoiding headlines or living under a rock, you know that contaminated cannabis products have been a problem within the cannabis industry for many years, and it just seems to keep coming. So from molds to microbials, pesticides and heavy metals, cannabis products can actually contain a wide variety of toxins if we're not careful in how these products are tested. So whether you're vaping, smoking, or ingesting, cannabis consumers deserve to know what's in their products. Today I get the opportunity to speak with Chris Henning, who is the Supervisory Analyst at AgriScience Labs in Denver. And they're going to talk to her, he's going to talk to us today about these new heavy metal testing requirements that have just come into light in Colorado. Welcome to the show, Chris. Thanks for having me. Absolutely. So before we dive in here real quick, though, why don't you tell us a little bit about yourself, Chris, and kind of your background and your role at AgriScience? So I've been working at AgriScience Labs for almost two years, um, starting in the microbial department and then moving up to pesticides and metals where I'm now the supervisor. Um, for previous to agri-science, I worked in the in environmental industry uh, as a metals analyst for three years. So I have experience with all of this stuff prior to coming here, which is why I was moved into this uh, position here. Right. Yeah, I can absolutely see where that background would come in handy with what you're doing today. So let's talk a little bit about these new requirements then. What has actually changed in Colorado? So as of January 1st of 2020, any harvest batch created this year has to be tested for heavy metals. Um, and those regulations fall into three different categories. There's uh, inhalant, which is all of our flour, which is the only thing that's required to be tested. Also, an inhalant would be you know, anything you would smoke, concentrates, things like that. Um, and then the other two categories, and all the other testing actually goes live in April, uh, on April 1st, for edibles and topicals, as well as concentrates. I see. Okay, so what kinds of metals are, are being required to be tested for now? So we... What the required testing goes for the big four, as they call them, arsenic, cadmium, lead, and mercury. Um, so those, and I'm sure everyone's heard of these metals at some point, um, these are all highly toxic. The body has no positive use for them at all, which is why they're being tested for. Right, and many of them, I believe, are even carcinogens, which we definitely don't want to be inhaling anything like that. You know, in terms of medical patients even, we think about these products that could have dangerous substances in them and it could actually counter, you know, counter affect what they're attempting to do in using medical cannabis. So testing absolutely is critical here. And now that these tests are going into place, what kind of results are you seeing in the lab and how are these changes going to impact cannabis businesses? It seems like almost every Every sample we see in has trace amounts of some of these metals in them, which is completely normal because cannabis is an amazing plant that has the ability to pull these metals out of the soil and also tolerate them and hold onto them once they're inside the plant. Um, so basically we're seeing trace levels of arsenic and cadmium uh, across the board almost entirely. Um, lead is more, common, more commonly seen with uh, plants that are grown outside. So in the in Colorado soil, which is high in lead, you can see the lead in these plants. Um, our fail rate is fairly low, I'd say, uh, around or less than 10% of things we test will fail. Gotcha. You know, and it, that brings up a good point, too, about the, the levels of these heavy metals that are in the cannabis plants. I've spoke to uh, other researchers and scientists, and they, they remind us that a lot of the, the foods and things that we buy in grocery stores, things that were, you know, grown here in the United States, that many of them may still contain these trace levels of, of heavy metals and things that have come out of the ground. But there is a threshold there. Um, where it's where it's safe to consume. So you're saying you're just seeing trace levels at this point, nothing nothing overwhelming. Exactly. Yeah, and trace levels um, 
we're at RSEC would be 0 0.05 part per million. And, and the limit for RSEC for reference is 0.2 part per million. Okay, gotcha. So one of the things that I've learned recently uh, in, the, in the interviews and things that I've done is that there really is a huge lack of standards in terms of testing requirements and testing methods. So can you tell me what does AgriScience do to help ensure that these testing methods are accurate and that, that you're getting the correct results every time? Sure. So our, our method we employ here is based on the EPA method, uh, 200.8, which I'm actually familiar from from my previous job. Um, and also with that method, we have to employ a series of blanks and quality control samples as well um, in order to ensure that our data is accurate. So for every batch of flower samples that we prepare, we have to include a blank with it so we know we're not getting contamination during the process. Um, we have a laboratory control sample, which is a spiked blank, so we know we can recover these metals if they're in there. Um, and also, within that batch, we'll have a duplicate of one flower sample, so we run the flower sample and it again side by side so we can compare the results. Um, and also a spike on the flower, which then we can recover, see if we can recover the metals from the, an actual sample that we've added some on top. I know that testing is going to be absolutely critical as this cannabis and hemp industry continues to uh, expand and to grow. It's going to be very interesting, I think, to see how, how things continue to develop. Um, now, AgriScience offers more than just the heavy metal testing though, right? You are a full service cannabis lab. So you can talk a little bit about the other types of testing and things that you do for the cannabis industry. Absolutely, so we have the full battery of tests. We have our potency testing, pesticide testing, uh, residual solvents testing, terpenes testing, um, and recently started doing vitamin E testing for vape oils, uh, which has been really interesting to see. Oh, most definitely. I, I recently uh, did an interview with a lab out of California and their test results of some cartridges that they, they offered a buyback program and they did some test results and almost 80% of the cartridges that they bought back were deemed unfit for consumption, either because of the vitamin E acetate or because of other contaminants that were in there. So it's, it's definitely very interesting to see how, um, how the labs and the research is really starting to kind of develop our understanding of, of what these final products actually do contain. Exactly. And I should probably mention we also do uh, the total use in mold and microbial testing. I'm sure our microbial supervisor would <laughs> shake her fist at me if she learned I didn't say that over here. But. Well, and that's a good point to bring up too. I mean, that's one of the things um, we saw the headlines back in October. Obviously, there was a problem in October with some um, testing, a lot of cannabis dispensaries or cannabis growers were testing positive for molds and microbials. So that clearly is something that needs to be taken into consideration uh, going forward and, and how things are being dried, how things are being cured, and whether or not the final product that's ending up in the, in the retail uh, market are, are still safe to consume. Exactly. And all of these recalls that have been happening are quite surprising where the levels of yeast and mold are way over the limit, which is at 10,000 right now. Um, fairly low compared to a lot of the food standards that we that we see, but we're seeing these recalls because they're tested at when they're in the shop, uh, in the dispensary, and then uh, they are over the limit. Yeah, we, we've definitely seen some of that personally here in our, in our market as well. So tell me a little bit now, kind of what's on the horizon for agri-science? Do you foresee more test results or more testing Coming down the pipe, do you think that there's going to be more regulations soon that cannabis growers are going to um, have to include more testing eventually in their, in their growing processes? Or what do you see for the future? So far, it doesn't look like the MED has set their sights on any new regulations. Um, I could see them potentially adding more metals to that list, uh, things like chromium, um, cobalt, copper, other toxic metals in high amounts um, that we would have to test. Right. And real quick, too, I think that this is just a really good point to kind of point out. You mentioned it earlier. 
having a contaminated product doesn't necessarily mean that the grower or the producer used anything that they shouldn't use. Some of these um, metals and, and things like you talked about may just come from the soils, correct? And because of phytoremediation, that plant's going to absorb those metals. So this is something that regardless of how the plant's being grown, these tests still need to be done. Exactly. Um, and often clients, after we make the call that they had a sample that was over the limit, they'll want to know immediately, where does this come from? And most commonly, it'll be anything that the plant can pull through the roots. So your water, your soil, your nutrients. Um, we've done soil and water testing, also nutrient testing for some of our clients as well, and found uh, arsenic actually in some in the rooting solution at levels up to like eight parts per million. Eight parts per million. Hmm. Interesting. Yeah, it's definitely going to be very fascinating, I think, as this industry grows to see all that we learn about the cannabis plant and, and how it grows and, and how it can affect, you know, the, the, the body and, and, and through consumption. So it's definitely going to be very interesting. And we're glad that labs like AgriScience are on the task of letting us know which products are safe and which ones aren't. Absolutely. It's always exciting to see what's in these plants that we have enjoyed for so long in our lives. Right. And, you know, that's one thing, too, that I'll say that I, I hear people say a lot is, well, we've been consuming cannabis for thousands of years. Yes, we have been consuming cannabis for thousands of years, but we haven't been using things like fuels and chemical uh, pesticides and herbicides on our fields and things like that for thousands of years. So we have to take those new types of environmental changes into consideration today. Exactly. Exactly. Right. Well, thank you so much for your time today, Chris. We really appreciate it. Now, if anybody wants to get a hold of you or get a hold of AgriScience, how can they do that? Uh, the easiest way is uh, by phone. Our number is 303-292-3800. And we have, our staff will be happy to answer any questions you might have, turnaround times, pricing. Just let us know. Great. Thank you so much for joining us today, Chris. It's been a pleasure. Thank you so much for having me. Absolutely.